Hi, Rob. Shop Prop Realty. I wanted to chat navigating today's real estate market, a look at inflation versus home prices and this 30 year fixed mortgage rate, because we're still kind of involved with that. And it's very difficult in today's world not to open up a website or turn on a TV and not see some type of commentator or something from somebody saying we're going to hit this recession in the second half of this year and that, you know, inflation and yada, yada, yada. We have this big, these big issues to deal with. What, what I'll tell you is that typically speaking, when you talk about the sentiment, when it's largely bearish, that actually bodes well to be bullish for the overall market, usually is a bullish indicator. I know it, it may be hard to see a way out of the current inflation trap that we're in without some type of recession. However, the opposite, like I said, when you talk about just the bearish sentiment, usually that indicates a bullishness that could be occurring in the future. But let's talk about uh, history for a second because these two charts, and I wanted to talk about the late 1970s and early the early 1980s and then the mid 2000s because all, during the 1970s inflation was skyrocketing as we can see right inflation was skyrocketing and interest rates were reaching unprecedented levels right you had interest rates up in the 10% range at that point home prices still increased in that market and the market continued to go primarily due because of strong demand for housing and it outpaced the economic constraints. That was in the, in the 1970s, the late 1970s. You had something occur in the early 1980s as well. And it was even worse. You had inflation continuing to skyrocket, right? This inflation index absolutely took off and you had interest rates moving up into as high as over 18% for the 30 year fixed mortgage. Uh, the Federal Reserve during that time raised interest rates to combat inflation, but the housing market remained resilient uh, during that time, as you can see. And that continued actually until about the 1990s uh, during this Gulf War. You had the market start to slow right in here. This is where you saw that slow. And then this is the the Internet boom that we had occur. We had that little re recession in uh, 2000, market rallied hard. And then this was another time, and people might forget this, but in the mid 2000s, right? Here's the 30 year fix where we had interest rates moving up, we had inflation occur. And then what we did have is we had that great recession uh, come off. So we're see, we saw, have those other two, we have three examples of the same kind of environment that we're in now, high interest rates, uh, inflation, and yet the markets continued to move up and was bullish. Again, you could certainly see some type of recession in the future, but what I'm saying is that let's take a look at what's going on in the current economy because you still have pent up demand, you have limited inventory, and you could have inflation getting under control, right? And this would obviously really spike the market. So pent up demand uh, being that we still have people that are looking for properties. And now we have limited inventory somewhat driven by the fact that we have these higher interest rates. So now sellers that were going to sell because they have these lower interest rates that in place and they're looking at buying a property and they're saying, God, I'm going to get a 6%. This is my cost are staying put in their current properties. So, and, and I'll tell you one other thing that I think is important to remember that even though you're looking at the market and it's 20% off its high, let's say 15 to 20%. And in some situations less now because the markets rallied a little bit since the low point that we hit in October of November, but much like we were telling our clients at the beginning of 2022, and that is that if you're buying a property right now, you're buying it at this high rate, you're, you're buying it at this current price, chances are the property value is going to be lower the second half of the year. The trade-off is, is that you're getting an interest rate at 3%. In the second half of the year, you're going to be getting an interest rate at 5 or 6%. 
and now let's say five and a half to six percent currently. That's the same thing that occurred the second half of the year. That trade off, those people that bought in October, November, which is the current low point in the market, the short term low point, those people bought at 20 percent lower, but they were paying at that three percent higher. Right. So whatever my mortgage is that I'm that I, if I didn't pay cash, whatever that mortgage is, that three percent extra that I'm paying, that's my delta. So if I'm got a million dollar loan and I'm paying an extra three percent per year, right? Three percent per year on a million dollars is thirty thousand dollars. I basically if I'm buying a house that is three hundred three hundred thousand dollars less than I would have paid at the beginning of the year. I have 10 years to cover that that 3% extra that I'm paying per year. So it was a pretty good bet for people at that point to go ahead and pick up. And I think that people that bought at the beginning of the year, especially if you're looking long term, are going to be doing well as well. But that's my point about the current market is that with this idea of inflation in this 30 year fixed mortgage, when you take a look at it and then you see all the bearish sentiment, I, I'm, I'm tending to lead, leading more towards the bullish environment going into the first quarter of next year. Might Just like all second halves, it'll probably be a little bit weaker, but it'll be real interesting to see what happens again at the first quarter of this next year in 2000. Uh, 24 and see how that actually works out. I would think that we're going to see some bullish bullishness moving into that time frame. Anyhow, I hope that helps. Have a great day.